Well, thank you for this opportunity to share a little bit about my work with you today. It's a great honor. Um, my contribution to work in this area, as Richie suggested, um, concerns the relationship between stress and inflammation. And this, this relationship is important because um, while inflammation is a really critical um, tool in surviving the types of stressors that we evolved with, and Richie alluded to this a little bit last night in um, the conversation that he had with you, um, the types of stressors that we evolved with were typically things like physical attack or predation. And um, that's really different than the types of stressors that are most typically experienced by people today, which are likely to be things like um, financial concerns or um, worries about relationships with others, stressors that are psychological in nature. And this mismatch has consequences for our physical health. Um, the effects of stress on our body contribute to chronic disease, chronic inflammatory disease in particular, um, rates of which are, have been rising rapidly over the last several decades, as you can see um, in this plot here. And that has created an e a really enormous public health burden. And so this has led me to question um, whether we can have any influence over how we respond to stress and whether mental training techniques like the various um, forms of meditation practices might be useful tools in this regard. Um, and if so, how can this be measured? So in a set of studies, we created an inflammatory response in the skin using a cream that contains capsaicin. And capsaicin is the chemical that makes chili peppers hot. And when you apply it to the skin, it causes this area of redness that you can see in the photograph here. And by tracing the outline of this flare response, um, we can quantify the size of the inflammatory response. And um, so the white area is just where the cream was applied, and the green dot is just a sticker that we use to scale the photograph. And we applied the capsaicin cream to the skin in, um, of individuals just before they entered a stressful scenario. And this stressful scenario is similar to some of the most common forms of stress that people experience in modern society. So um, in this particular scenario, our participants had to give an unexpected speech um, and perform some uh, mental math problems in front of these two judges who were evaluating them. And the judges were specifically trained to be very um, unresponsive and stern, to give the impression that the participants were performing poorly. And we measured the stress response using a hormone um, in saliva called cortisol. And um, so using the, co uh, the combination of the um, of application of the capsaicin to the skin in the context of this stressful scenario, we're able to measure how um, stress contributes to the development of an inflammatory response. And we did this in two groups of people. The first group were people who had no experience with meditation, who were assigned to either a mindfulness-based stress reduction training program or to a control group where they were trained in other forms of well-being like exercise and nutrition training. So mindfulness-based stress reduction, which Court just alluded to a few minutes ago, um, is an eight-week introduction to meditation um, training program that was developed by John Kabat-Zinn. And it um, mostly focuses on um, breath and body awareness, but also a little bit on awareness of um, thoughts and emotions. And um, we measured the stress response and inflammatory response before training, and then again after the training was completed. In a second study, we um, did the same exact thing, except that we compared uh, moderately experienced meditators with individuals with no meditation practice, or no, no meditation training at all. And the experienced meditators had about on average 9,000 um, hours of lifetime practice, mostly in Vipassana and compassion style meditation techniques from a variety of contemplative uh, traditions. So if we look at the first um, group, the, those assigned to MBSR compared to the control condition, what we see is that there's no difference in um, their stress response to the stressful scenario, either before or after um, the training finished. In fact, um, the stress hormone levels declined to a similar extent in both groups. 
But if we look at the inflammatory response, we see that again, the groups didn't differ prior to training, um, but the pre-training measures were collected in the warm months, whereas the post-training measures were collected in the cold winter months when the skin tends to be drier and more irritable. And so we would expect a greater inflammatory response during this time. And that's indeed what we see in the um, control group. But those who were trained to meditate um, were protected from this increase in inflammation that we saw in the control group. <clears throat> when we look at the experienced meditators, we see that they showed um, a, a reduced um, stress response to that stressful scenario compared to the non-meditators. And they also showed a smaller inflammatory response compared to the non-meditators. And so what this data suggests is that um, training and meditation can reduce both our stress responses as well as the, the increase in inflammation that's associated with stress exposure. And the implications for these data are potentially enormous. Um, for example, in a lot of the work that I do, I study individuals who have asthma, which affects about 10% of the population. And we've shown that psychological stress can cause an increase in inflammation in the lungs of people who have asthma. Similarly, um, inflammation is a major contributing factor to neurodegenerative diseases like Alzheimer's disease, which affects about 5 million Americans and about 45 million people worldwide. So with just these two conditions, not including all the other inflammatory conditions out there, the implications, the public health significance of reducing stress-related inflammation is potentially profound. And I'm currently running a study um, in individuals with asthma to see if training them in MBSR can have an impact on their asthma um, through um, its effects on the brain. And so um, I'll stop there, and um, thank you very much for your interest and your attention, and um, thank all of you who made this work possible. Thank you, Melissa.